Hello and welcome back to another video. My name is Mike Davies and in today's tutorial, I'll be showing you 10 time-saving tips when it comes to using GIMP. I'll be using GIMP version 2.10.24, which is the latest version of GIMP at the time of this tutorial. But of course, before I get into that, don't forget to check out my website at daviesmediadesign.com. As always, I have tons of video tutorials on here. You can check out my latest clips and I have free software help articles available in 30 plus languages. So definitely check that out. You can enroll in my GIMP 2.10 masterclass from beginner to pro photo editing on Udemy. And you can get more content by becoming a DMD premium member. And I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. Let's get into it. The first time-saving tip when it comes to using GIMP is that you can create a new document using two very quick actions. So all you need to do is have GIMP open, of course. And if I hit Control N, that's gonna bring up create a new image. And then if I hit the Enter key, it's gonna go with whatever the last dimensions were that I used to create a new image. So let me just show that again, Control N. In my case, I often use 1920 by 1080. You can change this to whatever you want right now and click OK and then the next time you use Control N it'll come up with these dimensions and by hitting the Enter key you are clicking OK essentially. So Control N, Enter key, there we go. Let me just exit out of here. I also want to add a sort of bonus tip to this first tip and that is that you can also open up your documents that you recently opened, so documents inside your document history using the control key and a numerical key. So for example, if I hit control one, that's going to open up whatever the last image was that I opened. In this case, it is this photo here with the main subject outlined with the selection area. Control two will open up the second entry inside of my document history panel which is gonna be this thumbnail I created. So if I come over here and go to File, Open Recent, you'll see each one of my recently opened documents has the control key plus a numerical field. If you're using a Mac, it might be Command-1. And you can sort of hover your mouse over each one to get a slightly larger preview if there is a preview for that particular image. So you can see here, Control-6 is gonna open up the sixth entry here. Time-saving tip number two is that you can create guides using selection areas, and this comes in handy in many use cases. So for example, let me come over here and I can create a guide from the perimeter of this document that we have opened up by hitting Control A or going to Select All. And that's gonna create a selection area around the perimeter here of the document. And then I can go to Image, Guides, New Guides from Selection, and now you'll see we have a nice set of guides here around the border of our document. And if I hit Control Shift A or go to Select None, that'll deselect that selection area. And now we can easily work inside the border of our image thanks to these guides. And it doesn't have to be a border of an image. You can also do it here. You can see I have this selection area around my subject. So if I go to Image, Guides, New Guides from Selection, now I have a set of guides here around my selected subject. So I'll hit Control Z to back up. Time saving tip number three is that you can open up multiple photos simultaneously in GIMP either as separate compositions or as separate layers simply by clicking and dragging your photos into GIMP. So for example, let's open up my file explorer here on Windows. If you're using Mac, you're gonna use your Finder window. So I've got three photos here. All I need to do is just drag my mouse over all three photos and I can click and drag these over here to this little Wilbur icon above the toolbox. And when I release, it's gonna ask me if I wanna convert this to GIMP's native sRGB color space. You can hit convert or you can keep it at its original, whatever you prefer. So I'll hit convert for all three. But now you'll see we have all three images opened up here into GIMP. And another bonus tip is if you use the Alt key and a numerical value, so Alt 1, that's gonna bring you to that tab here up in the tabs for your compositions. So Alt-2 goes to the second one, Alt-3, Alt-4, Alt-5, and Alt-6 is just gonna cycle through these tabs. But as I mentioned, you can also open these up as separate layers inside of the same composition. So all you have to do for that is come back over here to your file explorer. So you already have this one open inside of GIMP. Click and drag my mouse over the two remaining images and click and drag this on top of my existing composition and release. And again, I'll hit convert. You can always check don't ask me again if you don't wanna do this for every time you open an image, 
But there you'll see by dragging our images on top of the existing composition, it'll open these up as new layers. Whereas if I drag them over here to the little Wilbur icon, it'll open them up as new compositions. Time saving tip number four is that you can bring up the last action you used inside of GIMP using the control F shortcut key. So an action can be a variety of things. It can be maybe a filter you used or maybe you applied guides to your image. Let me show you one example. I'll go to filters, enhance, sharpen, unsharp mask. So this is gonna sharpen the active layer that I'm on. So let's just crank this all the way up like so. It's gonna look horrible, but there you can see I've added a ton of sharpening. I don't recommend ever doing this, but I'll come over here and click OK. So if I hide that layer and come over here to the next layer, make sure that's my active layer. Control F is just gonna repeat the sharpening using the exact same settings as I used last time. So there you can see it's been applied here. Or if I come over and hide that layer and click on the bottom layer, Control Shift F, or I believe Command Shift F on a Mac, is gonna bring up the same dialogue. So it's gonna bring up the sharpen dialogue with the default settings here, as opposed to just applying those settings to the layer. And then we can go back here and make whatever settings we want to this, whatever adjustments and click okay. So this works for other actions as well, which makes it super useful. For example, let's say I wanna place guides on my image at a certain percentage or a certain location. I can go to image, guides, New guide by percent, for example. So let's say I wanna place some center guides and I wanna do this first in the horizontal direction. So I'll set this to 50% and click OK. If I hit Control Shift F, that'll bring that right back up. And then I can go to vertical, hit OK, and now we have center guides. So this is just a quick way to apply multiple actions to a composition or to multiple compositions because you don't have to be within the same composition to use this feature and either use the same exact settings or maybe tweak the settings a little bit depending on which shortcut you use. So for the next tip, I'm gonna come over here back to this image I opened up earlier. Time saving tip number five is you can quickly invert a layer mask's colors using the color invert option. So let's say you apply a layer mask. Let me just come over here and hide the bottom layer. So of course we can apply a layer mask in GIMP using a selection area. I do have an entire tutorial dedicated to layers and layer masks if you wanna learn more about that subject. But let's say we wanna apply a layer mask to this. So I'll come over here and right click, go to add layer mask and choose selection as initialize layer mask two and click add. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna fill the selection area in with white and then fill the surrounding area in with black. But let's say that's actually the opposite of what we wanted to do. So we wanted to mask out the woman in the photo, but we wanted to keep in the entire background. The quickest way to do that, first I have to hit Control Shift A to deselect my selection area, but make sure you're on your layer mask and all you have to do is go to Colors, Invert, and there you'll see it's gonna swap the colors here of our layer mask. So now we have white where there was black, black where there was white. And if you come over here, you'll see now our main subject is masked out. Time saving tip number six is that you can add a folder location from your computer inside of GIMP's preferences. That way, anytime you are saving something, it is there for you to quickly access. And therefore you don't have to always go looking through your computer for the location where you're trying to save files to. So this can come in handy, of course, whenever you're just trying to save photos to a certain folder on your computer. But it also comes in handy anytime you're trying to save, for example, a pattern file to GIMP's patterns folder. So let me just demonstrate this. I'll go to file, export as. So here you'll see my export image dialog. So usually when you're trying to export to a certain location, you have to search through your computer in the places section here on the left side. So for example, I'd click on the D drive and just another example, click inside of the thumbnails folder. But let's say I don't wanna always go digging for this thumbnails folder when I'm saving my files. All I have to do is come over here and it's kinda of hard to see if you have GIMP in dark mode, but there's a little plus icon and this allows you to just add your current folder destination, which in this case is the thumbnails folder, over here to the places section. So now anytime I am exporting something or saving something, I can just click on thumbnails and that'll bring me here. So I'm just gonna hit cancel. This also applies to preferences. So let's go to edit preferences. 
And let's say in the future, I wanna be able to quickly find the brushes folder so I can export custom brushes. What I can do is navigate over here to folders and expand this. And you'll see here the first folder is gonna be brushes, so I'll click on that. So here you can see the file location of where GIMP wants us to save our custom brushes. And what I can do now is come over here and click this little folder icon. It says open a file selector to browse your folders. So I'll click on that. That's gonna take me to the brushes folder here. I'll double click to enter that folder. So now we're inside of the brushes folder. And once again, I can come over here and you'll see that little plus icon. So click on that. And now your brushes are added over here inside of your places section. So I'll click OK and click OK again. Time saving tip number seven has to do with quickly locating files or images on your computer. And this is useful whenever you are done with a composition. So let's say you save or export a composition and then you wanna upload that composition somewhere else like an external hard drive or maybe even the web. But instead of diving through folders and files on your computer, you can use a simple shortcut to locate that file you just exported or saved. So let me come over here to this thumbnail of Create Stripe Patterns. And this is an actual tutorial on DMD Premium if you are a premium member. But of course I could save this by going to File, Save, or File, Save As. And I've already saved this one, so let's just save this as Thumbnail-Test and hit the Enter key. So let's say now I wanted to locate this file on my computer because I want to drag and drop it into something like an external hard drive, for example. I can do that by going to File, Show in File Manager, and you'll see there's a shortcut key for this. On Windows, it's Control-Alt-F. So I'll click on that, and that has quickly located my file here. And now I can do whatever with this. I can click and drag it into a different location if I need to. But this is the XCF version, so what happens when you wanna do this with something like the exported JPEG version? Let me just minimize this. So if I were to export this as a JPEG by going to File, Export As, Create Stripe Patterns DMD Premium Tutorial-Test, which I've already done this once before, so it's gonna ask me to replace it. Hit Export again. So as I mentioned earlier, you can open up the last used document in your document history by hitting Control-1. And actually what GIMP does is it does place exported items in your document history. So in this case, File, Open Recent. You'll see here is our exported JPEG. So when I hit Control-1, it opened that up. And so I can use that shortcut key, Control-Alt-F, and that is gonna open up the JPEG here inside of my file explorer for Windows, the Finder if you're using a Mac. And now we can do whatever we want with this file. We can click and drag it to upload it somewhere or to change its location. Time-saving tip number eight is that you can change the mode of your move tool anytime you're trying to move a layer that's underneath other layers. So this can be very frustrating because GIMP requires the move tool usually to be hovered over a pixel in order to move that layer. So let's come back over to the original thumbnail composition here to demonstrate this. So right now there's not really a problem because there's nothing obstructing the pixels we wanna select. So with the move tool in GIMP by default, you have to hover over the pixels of the layer you want to move. But let's say there is an instance, for example, where you have some pixels obstructing the pixels you wanna move. So let's move the pasted layer here, which is just some stripes to the top of the text. So now let's say you wanted to move this text and you went to click and drag it while well, the stripe pixels are in the way. So that's going to move the stripe pixel layer. So let me hit Control Z to back up. What I can do is come over here to the tool toggle inside of the move tool options and change this from pick a layer or guide, which is the default option to move the active layer. So what this will do is move whatever layer is currently your active layer over here inside the layers panel. So if I wanted to move the stripe text layer, all I have to do is come over here and click on that layer. And now it doesn't matter what layers are obstructing this layer, I can click and drag this. And that's just a quick way of being able to move your active layer. I do recommend toggling this back to pick a layer or guide, which is the default. Tip number nine is that you can quickly bring a layer or layer group to the top of the layer stacking order inside of GIMP simply by using the shift key modifier inside of the layers panel. So for example, if I come over here to the layers panel, let's say I wanted to move the create text layer to the top of the layer stacking order. 
All I have to do is make sure that's my active layer and then come over here to this up arrow, hold the shift key and click. That'll move that to the very top. And of course the same applies if I want to move it to the very bottom, just shift and click on that down arrow. You can also simply click and drag this like so and release, or you can manually sit here and click on the arrow until it goes to the top. Sometimes clicking and dragging or just single clicking on this isn't practicable because sometimes there are tons of layers in a composition. So you may have this scroll bar scrolling down for quite a while. So to sit here and click and drag this to the very top while this is scrolling takes a while. So all you gotta do is shift click on that up arrow and that'll bring that to the top. So this does work for layer groups as well. Let me just come over here, create a new layer group, and just click and drag these layers inside the layer group and collapse this. Now if I click on the layer group and shift click on that, it'll bring all three of those layers to the very top. The tenth and final time saving tip for GIMP is that you can use the search actions feature to find any sort of filter or action inside of GIMP. I do cover this feature in a lot of my tutorials, including its own dedicated tutorial, which I recommend you check out for more information. So to demonstrate this, let me come over here and create a new layer. And I'm just going to name this vignette, set the fill width to transparency and click OK. Let's move the vignette out of the layer group to the very top. So now I can go to help, search and run a command. And for example, let's type in vignette and that's gonna bring up the vignette filter. So if I double click on that, that's going to quickly add a vignette to my active layer here. So of course I can make adjustments to this vignette on the canvas directly and come over here and click okay. And let's say I wanted to save this now, I can use the forward slash key on my keyboard, which is the shortcut key for search actions and I can type save, and that's gonna bring up save as, so if I double click on that, now we can save this. So I'll quickly rename that, come over here, click save, and there you go. All right, so those are 10 time-saving tips for GIMP. Let me know which one was your favorite in the comments or which one is your personal favorite that I didn't mention in this video. But that's it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can check out any of the links to my resources in the description of the video. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.